Hello and welcome everybody to another puzzle challenge video with chessuniversity.com. This is Ryan Murphy and to start this video I want to go over the solution to yesterday's puzzle before commencing with a new position for today. Today's new puzzle will be for intermediate players so rated under 1500 um, but this one was from the beginning of the week so we're still in the uh, beginner level tactics. This one's a mate in two and if you want to solve and you haven't already done so please take a moment to pause and uh, try to solve it for yourself because I'm going to present the solution. In this position, uh, the fastest way to win, and the mate in two, is starting with the move knight takes e7, double check, check by the bishop, and check by the knight. Because the king is in double check, uh, there's only one legal move, king h8. And now the king has no squares because the bishop covers uh, this square, the pawns cover all the other squares, so all we need is a single check to stick, and it will be mate, and that check is knight takes g6. Using the pin on the h file, uh, so that the pawn can't take the knight, the knight gives check to the king, and the bishop cuts up the escape square, uh, and that's mate. So hopefully you guys solved that one. If not, it's a really good pattern to review and to know, because it pops up in many different games. Uh, so let's now move on to our new position for today. All right. Here we have a position where it's white to play and win. There's a nice tactic available, and this one is an intermediate level tactic. So again, white to play and win. Um, if you think you've seen the answer uh, after you watch this video, you can head on over to chessuniversity.com on the official uh, post, which I'll link in the description. If you make a comment there, you can get rewards points on your account. So if that interests you, please do check out the link on YouTube. If not, you can just feel free to comment on YouTube. That's cool as well. And uh, yeah, let's see how this game developed up to this point. This was played between an 1100 and 1178 on chess.com in the 30 minute pool. And the game began as a Philidor. That's this move, d6. And white went with g3, which is not the most aggressive option. Uh, usually here, white should play the move d4 to try to open up the center. Though you can also develop the bishop outside the pawn chain first. But g3 was picked in this game. Knight to f6, attacking the pawn. d3, h6. A very slow move, not really developing any pieces. Not helping with control over the center. Uh, so. Black should probably just develop with bishop e7 or knight c6 instead of this move. Uh, bishop g2 played by white, bishop e7. Uh, c4 is not a move I love by white, but it's not terrible either. If black were to make the mistake of pushing this pawn to c5, there would be a very good square on d5 for this knight. Though in general, it's usually seen to be better to keep flexibility. So I would prefer to start with castling and then play something like c3, where white has the option to play for the move d4 in the future and try to strike in the center. After c4, obviously, pawns don't go backwards, so this option is going to be a lot harder to achieve. It's going to be harder to achieve, I should say. Um, so here, both sides castled. Now b6 was played, which is a move I don't fully understand. Um, seems to me that the bishop has plenty of squares along its natural diagonal to develop, and uh, it's usually pretty awkward to create a fianchetto when your opponent has already put their bishop on this diagonal. Currently, the diagonal is blocked, but Someday, if it opens up, there could be some tactical problems. Knight c3, c6. Uh, this move could have been played on the previous move. Doesn't really make sense in combination with the move b6. But it does prevent the knight from jumping into b5 and d5. Bishop e3, bishop to g4, creating a pin. And now white decides to expand on the queen side, which makes sense. Uh, the bishop's well placed over here. There's some space thanks to the pawn on c4. So it's logical to play on this side of the board. b4 is a reasonable idea. Knight bd7 played by black to complete development. And now b5. And here c5 really gives white um, a lot of what they wanted. Now the d5 square is permanently weak. Uh, but this was kind of inevitable anyways, because b5 could have taken on c6, and then on the next move played knight d5 anyway. So this whole concept's pretty nice in conjunction with uh, establishing an outpost. So this whole plan was pretty good for white. Uh, a4 played, knight h7, with ideas both of f5 in some positions and bishop g5 to exchange off this very sad bishop on e7, which otherwise is pretty stuck. Here white played the move h3, bishop e6 back, king h2, bishop g5, it's a strong move to exchange one of the worst pieces. Knight takes g5, and now a mistake from black in knight takes g5. A better move would have been pawn takes, which makes it a little bit harder for white to get the move f4 in, which is sometimes a useful pawn break. 
uh, and also kind of stuffs this bishop here on the diagonal. And of, of course it also avoids any immediate tactical problems, which is the, the big one. But after knight takes g5, it is white to play and win material. So hopefully you guys will solve this one. Uh, if you do see it again, check out that link in the description if you want to make a comment on the official post. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow with a solution to this one and a new puzzle. Thanks for watching.